Good morning, church. It is great to see you today on October 4th on a Sunday that we call World Communion Sunday. And before we go into worship, I just want you to take a moment to acknowledge that at this time or throughout the day, all around the world, there's people gathering to praise the name of the God that you and I believe. We're excited to go into worship, but also we're excited about what God did to the church last week in Mission Sunday. We invite you to see some of those highlights. Good to see you again. Uh, it is this time of the year when we can have a conversation about what's happening in the life of the church. When can we get together or not? As you recall, a couple of months ago, and, and as we be, what we were hit by this pandemic, we we start following this strategy as a way to gather together again. While we were in red, that meant we were not be able we were not able to gather in person and all of our worship services were online and all of our ministry was in a way that it was outside the building. As we're moving into an orange, or as we are into an orange stage, now it means we can have gatherings outside of this building. We have been doing it for the past couple of months with what we called house church. We did it in August, we did it in September, so in October we're going to do it again. Now we're going to have a house church campfire edition which means mark your calendar, October 11th, we're going to gather at the Bethesda campus in the parking lot and we're going to have worship in a way that we're going to follow all the social distance guidelines. We're going to try and make sure that you are safe. We did an event like this for the kids and it was a success. And we're going to try to gather the church. We want to see you and I hope you want to see us. We want to invite you to register online for you can get all the information that you need. October 11th, we're going to have this how church campfire edition to worship together and then if everything goes well and i'm going to go ahead and jump the gun we're hoping in november to start meeting in a weekly basis at 11 a.m for worship we'll do it in one of our campuses outdoor and we'll have to give you more details as the dates approach but we hope in the whole month of november to be able to see you in person in a safe way outside of the building and if COVID-19 numbers continue to trend the way we're anticipating, we're hoping that by December we can be in yellow and we can be back in our buildings. So right now, as you're getting excited to hearing this information, October 11th, 5 o'clock, 
Bethesda campus for our house church campfire edition. We want to see all of you. We want to invite you to register so you can be safe. Hear now the call to worship for our service. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, who has looked with favor on me, a lowly servant. From this day, all generations shall call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is the name of the Lord, whose mercy is on those who fear God from generation to generation. Thank you, Miles, for your words this morning. And as we are gathered as one church, yet still across houses, we want to invite you to take this time to, to bring before God your gifts, your tithes, your offering, to recognize that it is God who has brought us to this point, that it is to God's faithfulness that we can be as one, even though we are yet apart. There is a world outside that need Jesus Christ. And, and it is up to us to do something about it. As you help and as you believe and as you invest into the vision of the church, know that our goal it is to reach people for Christ. And for that, we want to partner with you in making that. There is several ways you can uh, give online or send your uh, uh, gifts to the address here below. And we want to just encourage you to to continue to believe in something greater than yourself, that it is for the sake of love that we exist as a church. For that, let us go before God in prayer. God, we just give you thanks for, for days like today, for days that we, we have to set apart to recognize that we are beyond just one individual group of people. God, that we belong to you, that we are human race. God, that you create sons and daughters all across the globe to be in communion with you. God, we pray that you will continue to help us to find a way to make that a reality. God, we give you thanks for your faithfulness. God, we give you thanks for your presence in our lives. God, for those who are still a uh, feeling the effects of COVID-19 in their health, in their finances, in their employment or lack of employment. God, we pray for grace above grace that can take place in those households. God, for those who, who in the midst of isolation uh, are being bombarded by, by, thoughts, by thoughts of anxiety, fear, uh, perhaps even suicidal thoughts. God, we pray for you to do what only you can do, to bring a hope in the midst of hopelessness. God, for the prayer that has been shared uh, with us, God, and as we pray specifically by those names, we pray, God, that you will give the comfort to those who send those requests, that you hear their prayers. And God, for this morning, we pray that as we worship you, that we can continue to live into that spirit and lifestyle of worship in everything that we do. God, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. One of the beautiful things for us as an apostolic church, it is uh, to remember that you will follow in the footsteps of those who have walked before us. One way to do that is to uh, recite that Apostle Creed that was being taking place across the world uh, by those followers of Jesus. So if you know it, I'll invite you to recite it right now. I'll be reciting it in Spanish. Yo creo en Dios, Padre Todopoderoso, en el Creador del cielo y de la tierra. Creo en Jesucristo, su único Hijo, nuestro Señor que fue recibido por obra y gracia del Espíritu Santo, que nació de la Virgen María, que pareció bajo el poder de Poncio Pilato, que fue crucificado, muerto y sepultado, descendió de los infiernos y al tercer día resucitó de entre los muertos. 
subió a los cielos y está sentado a la diestra de Dios Padre Todopoderoso. Desde allí hará de venir a juzgar a los vivos y muertos. Creo en el Espíritu Santo, en la Santa Iglesia, en la comunión de los santos, en el perdón de los pecados y en la resurrección de la carne y de la vida eterna. Amén. Good morning. We're so excited that you've chosen to join us for World Communion Sunday. For our music today, we're going to try to focus on those elements that bring us together. The first hymn is an old Spanish communion hymn, and we're going to do it in Spanish and English. So I invite you to sing along with me at home. You're going to get two verses of each, so you'll get two chances at it. Sheaves of summer turned golden by the sun. Grapes in bunches cut down when ripe and red are converted into the bread and wine of God's love in the body and blood of our dear Lord. We are sharing the same communion meal. We are wheat by the same great sower sown. Like a millstone, life grinds us down with sorrow and pain, but God makes us new people bound by love. Un espigad orada por el sol, el racimo que corta el viñador, se convierte sangre del Señor. Compartimos la misma comunión. Somos trigo del mismo sembrador. Un molino a la vida nos tritutará con lor. Dios nos hace pueblo nuevo en el amor. As we come today for our morning prayer, let us center ourselves and think of a space that is calm and peaceful and relaxing, and a space where we can enjoy and appreciate the beauty of God's glory. Let us pray. Merciful God, we come to you today just thanking you for your goodness, your mercy, for allowing us another opportunity to be strengthened by your grace. Come, Lord Jesus, fill the heart of your faithful people. And Lord, show us your love, your power, and your might in this season. We come to you today, Lord, in this season of power of prayer. And so many times we see those in the biblical accounts who found themselves beside still waters, or found themselves in high mountains, or found themselves in places where they could just hear from you. So let us find that place. We pray today for leaders all over this world. We pray, Lord, for our government. We pray, Lord, for those who are sick, shut in in the hospitals. We pray for those who have lost jobs, those who are without food, those, God, who are seeking you in this season, in this time. And God, we ask that the power of the Holy Spirit will come and rest upon us and strengthen us to be the people of God you are calling us to be and that we manifest your glory, not our glory, but manifest your glory in the spaces we occupy. Come, Lord Jesus, show us your face, O oh God, that we know that you are God, that we experience your power, that we experience your might, that we experience your strength to go to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the world. And God, we're right here in Georgia. And God, it may be go to our own homes. It may be go to our neighborhood. It may be go to the next city. It may be go to our jobs. But God, help us to go and speak a word of hope and encouragement to someone who is lost. 
Bless the least, the less, and the lost. And Lord, we'll continue to give you the glory. We'll continue to give you the honor. And we continue to give you the praise, Lord. In the midst of all that is going on, sickness, disease, suffering, struggles, and in the midst of our victories, God, we shout hallelujah and thank you, Jesus. Be with us, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, church. Thank you for the beautiful morning. We worship together. Now I can say the Lord prayer in Vietnamese. Lạy cha chúng con ở trên trời, danh cha được tôn thánh, nước cha được đến, ý cha được nên, ở đất như ở trời. Hôm nay, xin cho chúng con đồ ăn đủ dùng, xin tha tội lỗi cho chúng con, như chúng con tha kẻ phạm tội nghịch cùng chúng con. Xin chớ để chúng con bị cám dỗ, xong cứu chúng con ra khỏi mọi điều gian ác, vì nước, quyền, vinh hiển được thuộc về cha đời đời vô cùng. AMEN Good morning. In honor of World Communion Sunday, the following is an adaption of the poem, The Table with No Edges, by Andrew King. We will sit down where feet tire from the journey. We will sit down where grief bends the back. We will sit down under roofs wrecked by artillery. We will sit down where cries sound from cracked walls. We will sit down where bread bakes on thin charcoal. We will sit down where there is no grain in baked fields. We will sit down 
under tents in refugee camps. We will sit down with those without documents on the other side of the wall. We will sit down with those who dwell in ashes. We will sit down in shadow and in light. We will sit down making friends out of strangers. We will sit down our cup filled with new wine. We will sit down and let love flow like language. We will sit down where speech needs no words. We will sit together at the table with no edges. We will sit to share one loaf in Christ's name, in one world. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts. See if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Amen. These are the words from Psalm 139, the prayer that um, we have in our hearts this morning. So uh, many years ago, carrying a newborn baby, I rushed through hours of international travel to see my mother who had been very sick and in the hospital. My flights were delayed, one flight was canceled, and I arrived many hours later than expected. After all these hours of travel, I finally made it home to my mother who had been waiting for me and my baby for hours. And despite her illness, she has spent those hours praying out loud for protection for me and my baby. I finally arrived after midnight, and after hugs and kisses, and after getting the baby settled, my mother and I sat in her bedroom, and we talk and talk until the sun came up. We did not realize that the time was going by. We were talking like we hadn't in a long time. She understood me as a woman, as a young mother, she had given me my start. She had encouraged me to be independent and opinionated. She knew my shortcomings and my successes. We talk and talk, and she heard me, and I heard her. My mother left us a few months after that night, and I hadn't thought about that night until just recently. A few days ago when I started reflecting about prayer, and this, com this memory came rushing back. I don't know about you, but I grew up in the intersection of various faith traditions, Christian faith traditions, Catholic, Protestant, Evangelical, Protestant, conservative. Uh, and these terms are certainly not good descriptors, but it gives you an idea. And in these traditions, I learned about a remote God sitting on a throne far away, ready to punish me. Or I later learned about a God maybe sitting a little closer, but watching everything I did in case I did something wrong. And it took me years. It took me diving into the scriptures. It took me listening and learning from others to get to know a different God. Neither of these images of a remote or punishing God or a God watching for my shortcomings are even close to the God I have gotten to know. The God that I have seen through the complex love story we have in the scripture. The God that has walked with me every day, even in the darkest of time when I lost a loved one and I spent hours crying on, in the bathroom floor. The God that had been with me in the happiest of times when I held my newborn babies in my arms. The God that had walked with me even when I left behind everything I knew and loved. And the God who was with me when I met new people different than me who welcomed me and offered me genuine friendship. So when thinking about prayer, we often think about asking God what we want or what we need, and that's certainly 
can be a part of prayer. Or we may think about words of thanksgiving and praise to God, and that can certainly be a part of prayer. But prayer can also be a way to get to know God in a new way and for God to change the way we see God. So when Agar, the future mother of one of Abraham's son, fled a violent situation, she had an encounter with God. God saw her in her desperate situation. And as a result, she gave God a name, El Roy. This name reminded Agar that God saw her, even though she was not an important person, even though she was a slave and a foreigner, even though she had fled and just wanted to die, God saw her and talked to her. And she met God, El Roy, the God who sees even someone like her. God also saw the prayers of the enslaved, suffering under the violence of their masters when they sang, down in the river to pray, good Lord, show me the way, down in the valley to pray. Prayer is not a perfect speech with a perfect syntax. Prayer is often more like this. When we pour ourselves to the one who loves us no matter what, when we pour our pain, when we pour our fear, when we pour our frustrations, and we can imagine God responding like this. Prayer gives us hope when hope is hard to find. This refugee mother and child in the midst of the war, war in Iraq make the sign of the cross with oil on each other's forehead every morning as they hope and pray they will survive to live another day. When immigrants cross the southern border of the U.S. fleeing violence and hunger, they ardently pray to God. They pray that they can survive and have a future. And these rosaries, which were taken from many of them, tell us about their prayers and about their hopes. It was with prayer that Christians not very long ago risked everything to work for civil rights. In prayer and song, they took to the streets, risking their safety and their lives to fight for justice and freedom of those who were being oppressed. When we are baptized, we or our parents make a vow to accept the freedom and power God gives us to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves. For such an endeavor, a, foul, a follower of Christ needs prayer, ardent prayer, a prayer that is not in any way passive, a prayer that moves us into action to fight for those who are victim of evil, injustice, and oppression. And to that, today, this kind of active prayer is as needed as ever. We, God's church, are called for such a time as this to fight against evil in our midst. So prayer is a powerful act through which we ask God for a change in the status quo and through which God gives us the strength to fight for that change, to use our gifts and our skills to fight for love, justice, and freedom. I'd like to you to remember a couple of things. First, when you pray, you are praying to a loving God that knows you. Just as I spoke with my mother that unforgettable night, prayer is an intimate conversation with God, the God who knows your deepest fears, your deepest regrets, and your highest hopes and dreams. And finally, Prayer is not passive. It doesn't stay in that conversation. Prayer is a powerful act through which God partners with us and we partner with God to change ourselves and to transform the world, to work for love, justice, and freedom all around us. Let us pray. Search me, O God, and know my heart. 
Test me and know my thoughts. See if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Amen. As we come from, from that moment of really seeking for and asking God to search in our hearts, uh, there is perhaps no greater way to do it than as we go before God uh, with these elements of communion. So we're going to give you a couple of minutes to go uh, to the kitchen or to somebody in your house and bring some bread or crackers or tortilla and get some juice or, or something to drink. And we celebrate this moment of intimacy with God. When, when we acknowledge that today in World Communion Sunday, people around the world with across all kinds of languages in, uh, in using on all kinds of contextualized of the elements, they are in that moment when we are together one with God. The beauty of this is that uh, God invites to his table to all of us. Uh, all of us around this globe, uh, over 8 billion people that we have access to God, if we just simply come with contrite hearts, if we simply come with, before God and say, God, here we are. So we invite you to go before God with us this morning. Join me in a prayer of confession as we confess our shortcomings to God uh, this morning, and as we uh, wait for His grace to be with us. Oremos. Señor, en esta mañana confesamos que no hemos hecho lo que Tú nos has llamado a hacer, que hemos fallado de muchas maneras, que no hemos amado a nuestro prójimo como como tú nos has pedido que lo hagamos, que no hemos um, ayudado al necesitado como tú espera que, esperas que lo hagamos. En, esta, en este día con, confesamos estos pecados a ti y pedimos tu gracia y tu perdón sobre nosotros. Um, y que como iglesia queremos uh, hacer un mejor trabajo, como tus discípulos queremos seguir el ejemplo de Jesús. Perdónanos en este día, amado Dios. En el nombre de Jesús. Amén. The good news, las buenas noticias, is that we can come to the table. Podemos venir a la mesa independientemente de nuestros pecados, regardless of our sins. So let's, let's get God to pour out His Spirit upon this element. Vamos a orar. Dios, te pedimos que, que en esta mañana pongas tu gracia en estos elementos de, de pan y de jugo. Dios, que sean en bendición para nosotros en la misma manera que tú eres una bendición para nosotros. Dios, que, que a través de estos, de estos elementos nos podamos conectar a ti eh, y podamos ser uno solos como tú eres uno solo con este mundo. Dios, te pedimos que a través de estos elementos Dios, podamos encontrar un momento de intimidad contigo que nos ayude a realmente ser tus manos y tus pies alrededor del mundo. Oramos esto en el nombre de Jesús. Amén. Amén. And at this time, at, at this table, we remember uh, what God did for us. We remember God's ultimate sacrifice of becoming one of us, uh, of becoming flesh. Uh, to show us the amazing uh, love that God has for us. So in this moment, at this table, we remember that Jesus Christ came to give his life for us. And, and with this bread, we remember Jesus' body that was broken for us because of God's love so we can have salvation. And we also remember uh, the blood that Jesus poured out to show us again God's love. The blood that Jesus poured out when he died in the cross for us. All of this we remember that God loves us no matter what that God is open and ready and happy to be in relationship with us at any time.
no matter what, no matter what you have done and not done, God is available for us each day, each minute. So we give God thanks for this ultimate sacrifice and for being able to remember that today through the bread and the wine. So whatever it is that you are, we invite you to take a piece of bread. It's the body of Christ that was broken for you. And wherever you are, we invite you to take a cup. That is the blood of Christ that was given for you. If you're watching today, and perhaps you do not belong to the Net Church or any Methodist Church, know that God's table is for all of us. You don't have to be a member of any denomination to receive this grace. And as we continue to experience this grace, we invite you to sing the next song. Christ is the bread of life for us, and he is the one bread for us, the one body of the church. Through all of our different cultures, all of our different areas that we inhabit, we are the one body, and Christ is the one bread. One bread, one body, which we bless and we though many throughout the earth we are one body in this one Lord Gentile or Jew serve What a wonderful morning this has been today. And I just want you that today, Pastor Snora's word and, and the service itself can help you remind you that we are part of God's greater world. We're looking forward to see you next Sunday in House Church Sunday campfire style here at the Bethesda campus at 5 o'clock. See you there or see you online 9, 10, and 11. Have a blessed, blessed week.